Well, it is Friday, the 8th of September, and I'm here with uh, Michael Elrith. Uh, Michael Harding is uh, traveling, uh, but uh, we're here with the regular financial uh, update for uh, for Friday. Uh, it is uh, been kind of a down week in the market. Uh, the uh, um, Dow Industrial Average was down 0.73%. Uh, the NASDAQ Composite was off 1.92%. Uh, the S and P 500 off 1.28%. Uh, treasury 30-year Treasury yield was up 4.7 basis points. Uh, probably the big news is a uh, fairly strong sell-off in the semiconductors. Uh, the SOX, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, was off 3.16%. So this historically is the uh, tough time of the year. Uh, here, probably the second half coming into the second half of September. Markets waiting on the Federal Reserve, which uh, will be meeting here in a couple of weeks. Um, everybody's hoping that the market, that the uh, um, Fed will stand pat, not increase uh, interest rates, and uh, hopefully we'll see a rally towards the end of the year. But uh, anything can happen. <laughs> but um, Michael Elrith, uh, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, I think that. Um... Apple's going to have to deal with this issues with China. Very true. Beings that uh, they announced they don't want government officials using iPhones that are man manufactured in China. Um, uh, perhaps something to that is the um, maybe the 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 U.S. Can, has such a a dominance in uh, software engineering that what China thought would um, surveil uh, the United States in particular, um, perhaps they're finding that their technology isn't as good as some private technology and, and not only Apple's, but what Elon Musk has going on. Um, if you heard there was um, Oh, there's some tempers sparking between Ukraine and and SpaceX and Elon Musk. And apparently Ukraine believes that SpaceX would have given Ukraine the ability to uh, crush a, a Russian fleet that was in a port. And Musk wouldn't agree to let uh, SpaceX be used to fight wars. Then um, that, that kind of comes back around to the Apple China thing that, um, you know, Musk could have a lot of power. Musk has, uh, and his company has a lot of dominance in in its engineering. Um, it's Which is pretty remarkable to overcome the bottomless pit of financial engagement that governments can have in um you know building their surveillance and, and weapons systems and and it's to me it's it's uh it warms my heart to think that someone and something besides the government has enough power to um you know that's if change the world may be a strong language, but uh, change um, events. And uh, I don't, I, I, you know, being a, you know, an entrepreneur and a capitalist, um, you know, I'm in the camp of, of not liking <clears throat> so much government interference. So I, I'm going to do a bunch of research about uh, the sparks between um, Ukraine and SpaceX um, do some more about the um, the the gap now between uh, China and um, and the iPhone. Uh, well, and then Mike, that you mm -hmm. say that about the iPhone because uh, you know the Chinese telecom company Huawei recently said that they had come up with a with a 5G phone and Huawei was one of those companies that had been on kind of the prescribed list um, 
mainly because a lot of hardware hacking, their stuff was ending up in 5G networks. Uh, so that's kind of kind of an interesting thing that all the Chinese officials are getting rid of their iPhones and probably going with Huawei, you know, and their their custom roll Android version. Yeah. Well, then in the meantime, will um, will the iPhone production move uh, out of China? Um, and that and that's a big deal. It, well, it, it could. Um, you know, you have the, uh, the app, Apple, or actually Foxconn is kind of the contract manufacturer for Apple, and they were supposed to, you know, with much fanfare, open a factory in Wisconsin, which kind of had they hadn't had much going on there, so that it's possible. Um, but part of the part of the whole Chinese thing right now is they're saying they want to become self sufficient on technology, so probably makes sense why they, even though iPhones were being manufactured in China, they don't, they don't want to be beholden to any uh, American intellectual property. Well, and they've surely have a lot of Chinese citizens with the iPhones. Um, um, well, it's probably just a matter of time until China says, get, get rid of your iPhone. Yeah, get rid of your iPhone and, and uh, um, you know, sort of make a waste out of the iPhones that have, have been in use, force their population to buy the other phone. Um, and and that'll have some effect on the rest of their economy. You take away from one thing, give to another. What's in between? It's kind of like, um, you know, when, well, when people start working at home, the the neighborhood dry cleaners go out of business because there aren't so many so many business, um, uh, you know, demand on on uh, dry clean products. So, so where where it goes from one to the other, there will be some dynamic there that we haven't uh, discovered yet. And then the other thing is, is uh, is China going to um, go to war with Taiwan? And if they do, is that a distraction from what's going on in their banking system or their economy? Uh yeah, it certainly, certainly could be, you know, a distraction from the real estate. Uh, but uh, we'll have to have to stay tuned on that, follow those conditions. Okay, what else is going on this week? Uh, bonds, what's happening with the bond market, Bill? Uh, well, like I said, the uh, 30-year Treasury was up uh, uh, slightly, I believe the 10-year. So, um, look here. Yeah. The uh, tenure fell a little bit. Um, nope, take that back. Uh, up about, uh, uh, yeah, fairly strong move up, about eight, uh, eight and a half basis points. So, uh, getting kind of going along a 52 week high right now. So the bond market's not really liking that. Um, bonds are gonna be down. Um, the, uh, there was the employment report came out yesterday and it was fairly strong, uh, which uh, the market did not like. And that's why the, uh, the uh, rates are moving up a little bit. Some, again, some trying to more game the, uh, the Fed and what they're going to do. So the economy is still doing fairly well. Um, inflation is still um, not brought down to the levels that the Fed had hoped for. So if there's the um, the guessing that the Fed will raise rates a little bit, then uh, bonds that are already in portfolios go down in value. And on the other side of the coin, some of the cash that's on the sidelines can go into bonds to earn a higher interest rate than it has been earning the last few years. 
Well, I think we already said that the Fed, you know, probably would stand pat, but what it means is higher for longer. Right. Less, you know, so right. we'll, we'll stay here longer with the, with the higher rates, may not move up, but, you know, the Fed will continue to wait, see what happens. You can't make everybody happy at the same time, can you, Bill? Uh, interest, well, rates, interest rates are up and that, that makes retirees a little happier if they're looking to get into the market for earning interest. And um, those that already own bonds are not so happy because the bond values do go down when interest rates go up or, or stay high. Well, there's don't forget there's also spreads. You know, their quality spreads are an issue. Um, so if the economy is gonna, going to, um, the chance of it going down while rates are moving up, then the spread to higher risk assets like stocks or high yield bonds get wider compared to uh, the treasury yield curve. So you can't just worry about rates, you have to worry about rates in comparison to everything else. Yeah, and time. And time. All the above. Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to add to that, Mike? If not, we'll cut this one short. No, I don't have much going on right now. Okay. 